Welcome to this video lesson. Today we're going to talk about gaseous exchange. Now, gaseous exchange refers to the exchange of respiratory gases. By respiratory, we those gases that are involved in respiration. Exchange of those gases between the body of an organism and its, and its environment. Gases are carbon dioxide and oxygen. Now, as we said previously in our lesson, then, carbon dioxide is given out as a result of respiration. Now, sometimes in some organisms it's quite a lot and it has to be taken out as fast as possible. And oxygen is needed in large amounts and therefore there has to be a way that brings the oxygen so that respiration can take place successfully. So, today we're going to talk about gases exchange and let's start with the definition. exchange takes place across special surfaces on non, on, a, on non organisms body which we refer to as respiratory surfaces this is exchange enables the of that organism to get rid of the carbon dioxide and taking oxygen and taking oxygen we need to take note of the difference between breathing or ventilation and gases exchange so we need to take note of gases exchange is slightly different from breathing why because gaseous exchange simply has to do with the surface across which carbon dioxide will diffuse and oxygen will diffuse also. So if this is our oxygen and this is our carbon dioxide, that surface where that takes place. Now that's where gas yes exchange really takes place. However, breathing is the process that makes gaseous exchange possible. So Breathing is an active, is an active um, process that brings about, you know, these gases coming to the surface, to the respiratory surface, whereas the gases exchange is that real process by which they cross over across that surface. And so, these two are so interrelated that you can't talk about gases exchange without talking about the breathing or the ventilation, you know. So, in whatever we're going to talk about, we're going to, they're going to be closely together because they work, they move hand in hand. So, breathing is an active process involving movement of air in and out or water in and out uh, whereas gaseous exchange is a passive process where gases simply diffuse across a surface according to the differences in their concentrations when the oxygen is more on this side then it will cross over by diffusion and when carbon dioxide is more concentrated on this side then it will cross over to this side by diffusion and so having taken note of that let us now go to the real gases exchange like we said all living organisms need oxygen actually now there has to be a way that brings the oxygen however when you're talking about simple organisms we're talking about very small organisms that are not complicated in their body formation for example you can give examples such as bacteria such as Paramecium, such as jerryfish, 
Jellyfish. Sorry. You can have any other small organism like amoeba. These organisms are small, very small in size. They're very small in size and they do and very simple structure. So for them, simple diffusion is actually enough to carry out all the gaseous exchange they need. So these ones use simple diffusion. What we mean here is that oxygen, which is highly needed into the body, simply diffuses across their surface, if it's maybe amoeba, across the cell membrane into the body. And carbon dioxide from the respiration simply diffuses out of the body. They don't need a particular, you know, like a nostril to do that because they're small. Therefore, the gases can simply diffuse across their surface and that oxygen will be enough to carry out all the respiration needs for that organism. So we can say that they have a small volume and a large surface area. So if, let's say I've drawn a my amoeba here, it has been magnified very many times. You know, it is small, it's a single cell. Actually, it can be a small, much smaller, many thousands of times bigger than this, you know, very small. So, if it is that small, let us draw the smallest we can afford. If it is this small, Gases can simply diffuse across and it will have all the oxygen it requires. However, when you go to larger organisms, uh, it's, it, it slightly differs. Why? Because they have a large volume for like you and me and a buffalo and elephant. We are quite large, so we have a large volume. Now, the surface area, we mean this surface that covers us, is too small. For diffusion to be enough across our skin surface to, cut, to give the bodies all the oxygen they require. Think about it. You have a liver inside you and guess what? The oxygen that diffuses across uh, your stomach's wall will have to move until it reaches one of the liver cells and then it reaches another until all the liver cells are done. I'm sure some will miss out on the oxygen which is critically um, disadvantageous to me in the end. So, my surface is too small for diffusion alone to be enough to supply all the oxygen I need for the big volume that I am. Therefore, there is need for these organisms to develop a surface that is specialized for only gaseous exchange. And that's where the lungs come in um, to, to be able to supply that so, large organisms have respiratory surfaces across which they use and then after that, these gases are transported or they find a way to the rest of the, bo of the body. Therefore, we're going to have to look at the different respiratory surfaces to, um, in the different animals because most of the animals are too, are too large for diffusion alone to to supply their oxygen needs and take away all the carbon dioxide that they require to take away. And so, let us now look at the different gaseous exchange organs and surfaces within a selected number of animals.
we have we have these few animals that we selected. Of course, there are many more, like crabs, lobsters. You know, um, I have not talked about the starfish. We've only selected this for now, and we're going to see their organs. The organs specialized for gaseous exchange. And so we're going to start with let's start with amphibians. Well, amphibians are quite special from the rest of the animals because they have three different gas uh, gaseous exchange organs or respiratory organs. The first one being the skin. The skin uh, is used for gaseous exchange and the, the actual exchange takes place at the skin surface. We shall talk about it in detail. The next one is the mouth cavity, the lining, the space within the mouth, which we are going to refer to as the buccal cavity. for mouth and cavity for like the space or the things found within the mouth space the mouth cavity and so um, within the mouth cavity the real part for gaseous exchange is the lining of the mouth the inside lining of the mouth okay is the gaseous exchange surface so we can say cavity lining or what we refer to as the epithelium. Don't worry about the hard word. Simply take a lining. If you can think of your cheeks in the, the flow of your mouth, the upper lower, the lining of the mouth cavity. And the last part are the lines. Now, within the lungs, not every part actually uh, is a respiratory surface, but the alveolus. Okay. Alveoli. There are many of them. We shall look at those in detail. So, the birds use lungs as their respiratory organs. Have you ever seen bird lungs? You should have. At least if you eating chicken they have lungs and the very part where the real uh, exit takes place are the alveoli still for fish they have gills and the very part where uh, respiration this is actually takes place are what we call the gill filaments Insects have, of course, we know they have spiracles, but there's mammals like you and I, cows, dogs, elephants have lungs. And the very respiratory surface are the tracheals. Tadpoles are the young ones of amphibians, like amphibians like frogs. Toads, salamanders, newts, the young ones have external gills. These gills have filaments. Filaments are like hair like projections, and that's where gaseous exchange takes place. You know, they live in water. They exhalate in water and they hatch in there. And the first stage of these amphibians is in water. And therefore, they have lungs for their gaseous, they have gills for their gaseous exchange. Those ones are gills, and particularly gill filaments. Of course, as the staples grow on, metamorphosis takes place and they grow into the toad without lungs, without a tail, because 
the toad finally comes out of water and finds life on us. That's why they are called amphibians because they have a double life on land and in water. And there are four the respiratory organs and surfaces that we could highlight. We're going to look at those in details in a little while, but for the moment we shall look at the features of the characteristics of a good respiratory surface.